This vlog is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more focused on the training entirely. So I'm going to give you more of a look inside the gyms. This first segment, I got done training with Sam Kays. He's a college player at Asbury. And then what I like to do with a lot of my college guys and some of the pro guys is play King of the Hill. Now, King of the Hill is basically a one-on-one -on -one game. You can have just two guys. You can have three, four, five. It doesn't matter. But basically, it is score, stay on. If you get a stop, then you get the ball. When I was overseas, I had a chance to be a teammate with a former MVP. And he told me what he used to do is play King of the Hill every day after practice uh, as a pro, but really his whole life. And that was the main way that he improved as a player. It held him accountable both offensively and defensively. And it really just helped him develop his game, his go-to moves, his counter, a uh, very crafty score. And so I kind of picked that up, adopted it. Last week I had a training session with Sam and then afterwards we played King of the Hill. Check it out. Well, if I listen to you and everything you put in my ear, I'll be living like coulda, shoulda, coulda. I'll be paralyzed by bed. Huh, ain't that the truth? If I quit, the only way I lose, I got two choices when I do this. Make moves or make excuses. Huh? If you know who I'm talking about, then you got me. My biggest enemy is me. And even I can't stop me. They try to shut us down and it ain't gonna slide. Only thing I fear is God and he on my side. That's the confidence of God, cause he got me. That's why I really feel like you can't stop me. I do a lot of team training as well. Here is the number uh, three ranked team in the state of Kentucky. I actually train a lot of their players privately. I understand when I'm working with the team, a lot of times I'm a change up from what they normally get with their coaches. So I'm, I'm trying to make it fun, uh, but also having them competitively challenge each other. And this group had a lot of fun. Check it out. Doing my dance, hey. I'm doing my dance. Don't mind me. I'm doing my It's a battle outside and you better be equipped So I gotta keep the good book on flip And I'm running through the rain and I think I might slip like Skirt picking it up, man, pick up the pace So put on my high hands high like I stick up the place Whenever I die, I'ma tell the mama I'm up in a better place Gotta be putting it down on the record, I'ma set it straight Okay, over the Thanksgiving weekend, we had our biggest clinic we've ever had with Hoops for Christ. It was awesome. I was expecting 40 kids. Man, we had 70 show up. It was crazy. The gym was lit. We had a great time. I would say almost half of those kids, this was the first experience they've ever had with us. So it was really important that we stayed organized, that they learned a lot, and most importantly, they had fun. I think our team did a great job. Check it out. The higher that I go, the more unforgiving they are. No race and no exceptions. All they want is perfection. The man in the mirror can't even see his reflection. You live for their acceptance. You die from their rejection. But even if I fall, I fell in the right direction. Right, right, yeah. Cage of prison. 
reason that everyone's approval. Fight for acceptance and struggle so you don't ever lose it. But living for their acceptance has got to stress it. Insecure people. Now, it's no secret that my thing is kind of the two ball dribbling and ball handling. And I take a lot of pride in the shooting demos. But I wanted to show you almost the full clip of the two ball demo with me and Terrence, what we do. And the main thing behind this, what we're trying to teach, is not just work ethic, but also how to handle failure. The reason why I started doing two ball dribbling because I failed at it utterly at a camp when I was younger. I did two ball dribbling trying to impress some coaches. I was terrible at it. So I made a decision that, hey, I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna learn to get better because my goal when I was a kid was to play college as a point guard. And so I knew I needed to be a great ball handler. This is something I used to do before every practice and game, both in college and professionally. I like to do this at big camps. This clinic was a, a really good opportunity to show a lot of these young kids what work ethic will do. Check it out. But should I fall? I'm paused to take a photo op. None of it's real, it's just Photoshop. Crop out my flaws and my failures, my aches and all my ailments. And now I'm picture perfect, take all my dirt and conceal it. Really, I'm no better than any, but they pay me a pretty penny to sit and look pretty. Not too big, not too skinny. Be whatever these fans demand of me, cause otherwise they probably wouldn't love me. The show goes on even after the curtains close. I smile and pose, put my signature on it close. They lift me up so high that I'm surely about to fall. The higher that I go, the more unforgiving they are No grace and no exceptions All they want is perfection The man in the mirror can't even see his reflection You live for their acceptance You die from their rejection But even if I fall, I fell in the right direction Yeah in this past week had a chance to go back to my former high school PRP high school I got a chance to train with them but more importantly I got a chance to talk to them invest in these guys and I know when I'm talking to a group of players I always want to give them something of value so like how they can be successful right now how to get into college uh, what it's like to play overseas that's usually the main questions that I get so I talk about that and then obviously with hoops for Christ you know my mission is to use basketball as a platform to share Christ and so I kind of segue into that. Check it out. What truly separates people is what I call specialists. Whatever you're good at, whatever comes naturally, whatever you're gifted at, focus on your strength. And this is what I mean. A lot of people are going to tell you you need to work on your weaknesses. And to a certain extent, you do need to work on your weaknesses, whether it's as a basketball player or as a person. But what's going to separate you in life from everybody else is your strength. The NBA, they're getting paid to do one thing. Now, they're good at other things, but what makes them special is that one particular thing. So with you guys, what you've got to ask yourself is, what brings me the most value to this team right now? And then if I'm trying to go on further to the next level, why would somebody, why would somebody give me a scholarship? Or what's the first thing that should come to their mind? 
Focus in on that. That's what you need to become. And that's anything, anything in life, whether you guys go on to, in, your, in your careers, in business, whatever you, focus in on your strengths, and that's what's ultimately going to separate you.